All right, guys, welcome to another episode. Now, any of you that have followed me for a while know that when I have this shirt on that says, ask me about my surgical procedure, that means that there's something serious going on. And we're gonna put on the official surgical mask of my channel and we're going to tear something apart over there in autopsy suite A. Now, nothing like a return patient, right? If they didn't die the first time in my shed and they're goofy enough to come back. Yeah, I don't know what to tell you, son. Anyway, you all know this one as the 1950 silver tone junk pile and I think there's a playlist or an episode that I'm going to give you a link to right up there right about now. Uh, this was a lightweight uh, student guitar and um, it got fixed up. There's good tuners on it. There's good there's a good pickup on it. It had a lot of body work done on it. Cracks and things like that. But Here's the deal, here's what happened. It went into a guitar shop. Now when you send your stuff to a guitar shop, unless they buy it and it's theirs, well, there's a couple things you need to know. People come into guitar shops and they play guitars before they um, buy them. Imagine that. And so what I try to do if I put something in the guitar shop, is I give on the tag uh, a QR code that says, hey, you know, pull this up, take a look at it. This obviously isn't something you normally see, right? And so we all know that these guitars, this one, 1950 plus 50 is 2000 plus 23 at the time was, uh, geez, that's 73 years old. So you're dealing with a student model type guitar of a catalog that's getting on 75 years old. So you might want to look at this and go, hey, I don't crank it up standard tuning. So I put my stuff in open D, they call that drop D. So it's a tuning that's not really heavy. And I keep my string, the biggest one on these you know, try to keep it around 42 or something and get the bottom one around 10. Now, it went into the shop, it was okay. Um, you could fret on it, but I went and checked on it a couple times. It wasn't moving off the wall. And when I look closer, look at this. Look how high that neck is, or that string action. I can literally, literally put my little finger underneath that it didn't go in that way so what happened well it needs a neck reset right wrong does that look like the neck is broke loose no but there's a definite wow right here so here's what happened somebody cranked up the tuning to whatever it is they 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 did i would imagine they heard a pop right then because somebody has taken the bridge here and pulled the thumb uh, wheels out of it and there is definitely a sinking spot right here so moral of the story the top is cracking loose now which probably means a tone bar cut loose and even though the neck is not broken loose from the body there's something wrong so what we are going to do is we're going to pull the back off of this thing because here's what I've said to you a million times. If this distance between here and here moves and the block, the head block of the guitar is left to move this way, this much will turn into this much, I guarantee you. So we're going to loosen off the strings. Um, we saw... Uh, punk in the junk pile arch top we had to do all kinds of work on the inside of that one and end up putting a brace 
in between the head block here and the tail block here and that's probably what we're going to do here so if you saw the pumpkin list it's up there it ended up going out to uh, Jody Carroll in North Carolina and he's tearing it up so this is not a big deal for me but it's yet another lesson when you go look at these old arch tops if you see that this part is sunken down if you see that the F hole profile right here is sticking way above the body and you've got cracks at the F hole right here especially on the base side and you got this going on yeah so Let's get over to Autopsy Suite A and fire up Granny's Iron and all my hot stuff and let's get the back pulled off of here and we will do the typical stuff I do to get this back together to pull this neck angle down back into action. We'll get this in somebody's hands that's going to take care of it. Okay guys, the first thing we want to do is we want to loosen off the strings. These strings are going to be... Um, left on the guitar because we are going to need to tighten them up here and there once we get the neck where it needs to be so we're just going to loosen them up quick here and get some of the knobs and things like that off of the guitar so we're not breaking things loose when the guitar goes upside down because it's going to need to be there. We're going to get out Granny's iron and the palette knives and all the rest of that kind of stuff to make sure that we are... We'll pull this bridge off of here. Yeah, that got... Look at that. That got taken down to about nothing. Anyway... Let's flip this over. All right, we'll flip it upside down. And I can see already right in this area right here, there is a bit of the body, probably about two millimeters, the sides sticking out from the bottom. Okay, for those of you that haven't seen this stuff before, we got the hobo hot plate. It's going to sit right over here in this area. And then we've got Granny's iron from about 1910 and the little holder that it sits upon. And we're just going to heat this iron up on top of the hobo hot plate. And then we're going to use a number of pallet knives to break this loose. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to take a razor knife and carefully go along the edge where we glued this up before. And I want you to remember that we used hide glue. And we're going to be glad that we did because tight bond, especially tight bond two, it's not going to want to cut loose. And you'll remember that when we patch this stuff, there's cleats in here, there's kerfing under here. So when we start using pallet knives, we want to make sure that the knives we use aren't burning way back in here very far because you'll cut your curving loose and then the next thing you know the whole thing is coming undone worse than it could be so when you're using a razor knife it's kind of like running a cutting torch find out where you need to be hold your finger in the same place and just pull it around but break that seal so once we get in here once everything is heated up, we can take those pallet knives and get this thing working to cut it loose. Seems like I've worked on this one before. Well, because I have. Imagine that. Okay, once our pallet knives start to heat up a little bit, we just want to come in here on the edge like so and just walk them around. Look at that. I don't like that popping so much, so let them heat up a little bit before you move along. But this is going to come off pretty easy. Now you want to remember that your head block and tail block, top and bottom, are back into here. And the glue that we put on when we put this thing back together go there. So um, also expect that wherever you get other repairs that they may break loose. But the whole thing... It's just to move 
nice and slow and let things heat up. I like these small ones that I've cut down because you can just stick them in once you get them in and you can just walk them forward nice and slow and let the heat do the work when especially when you get on the curves up in this area here um, if you've got cracks be careful because they'll want to split open and run okay we're a little bit less than 10 minutes into this and we're quite a ways up to the side here and again it's just keeping things hot and not forcing things till things start cracking there we go we are all the way up to here and everything over here is loose so we've got this part done this is about a 15 minute job you can tell that this one's hot yeah it's just melting through right there look at that clean one owner just a little bit of sanding to do there but all good now the most important thing here is we didn't put a support system in here we're going to do that all of our bracing seems to be okay but the one thing that you can tell right away I can flex this you see that let me pop the camera down a little bit it's important you see this I can take this part and this part and pull them together three four millimeters and that is where the neck angle went bad when the neck points down this has to come up so what we're going to do is we're going to cut a brace into here and here and pull this up and then we'll set it once we know that the strings and the bridge are good all right so the first thing we're going to have to do is we're going to have to build one of those interior structures that supports this part right here because you've got some telltale cracks that are going on right here uh, this part of the uh, soundboard which is the top near the F hole and the base side is starting to cave and that's all part of the problem so well, we got the back off we're gonna build a structure now the thing about it is you've got to match that structure to the curve of the arch top and so what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull the bridge off here like so and we're basically going to take this piece of wood here like so and I've got a center mark on it so we're going to center it up like so the strings are centered there we're going to put that mark in between the strings like so and then because it's sitting there on top we're going to take a pencil from the wink can this is the love pencil and I am going to do you see what I'm doing there now there's a slight arch right there and I am going to take this now and cut this radius out here and then that will help us have a pattern to form the structure that's going to sit up in here so in other words when I cut this here the top of the structure that sits down in here is going to have to press up against this radius without gaps and that's where our support will come from so what it will look like is you'll have one here and one here with rods connecting them again matching the radius of this specific guitar so this is key now i want to show you something close up here this is a seamstress slide rule or whatever you want to call it and you'll notice that this line is not 
radius the same on both sides, meaning that this is collapsed at one point. So I'm taking this slide here like so and putting it on this side and pulling it up to that pencil mark right there like so. And then I'm going to take this and put it over here and I've put a, a mark right there. So that's how I will match this radius. Okay, so back from the bandsaw and the belt sander, we've taken this and sanded it down, marked the middle, and then taken a piece of oak stock. You can get this at a hobby store and match this. So again, imagine this will have notches for the tone bars that are running here. And there will be two of these and one will sit here and one will sit here and they will straddle the tone bars and give this area support. You see that? This radius will be underneath. All right, we have two of these braces here. They're taped together. Now they've been sanded individually to fit the body, but what we're gonna do now is we're gonna have to gap them out a little bit. And in order to stop them from twisting this way or this way, we're going to space them with these dowels like so. So I'm going to go ahead and drill a hole uh, right there and one right there while the, they're taped together. So these dowels will fit in and then we'll figure out how to put this all together. Um, these are the least important part of the equation. It's really important, as you can see here, that these sit down, they grab the tone bars, and one's going to be spaced about there, the other one there. And what these will do is stop them from twisting this way or shifting one way or the other. They're just a stabilization piece. Okay, guys, little hint. When you are drilling the holes for the dowels here you want to use a pilot bit like this you want to go through both of them and then take them apart and go through one side first and then the other side on both of them with your bigger bit because if you don't you're going to end up with a lot of blowout this is oak so i would drill this here flip this over and then go to each one and carefully drill. Start off by drilling backwards because that'll get things going for you or even use a countersink. But the whole thing here is to get these like so, so we can put the connector pins in. Okay, so here's number one. It fits down in there nice and tight. And when we push the weight down which will be granny's iron remember granny's iron it will push down this way this one fits here everything is snug to the bottom and then we can gap these based on where we want the bridge we want to make sure that the bottom gets knocked down so it's laying right there okay and then once we get everything in order we just take our pins through the two holes and gap it the way we want. And then we will just glue everything up like so. And there we've got our bridge support. Let's get some paint on this thing. All right, we have the hide glue heater going on behind us. Um, this is nice and warm to the touch and we have our overpass structure sitting inside the guitar and I've gone ahead and put everything together and have put marks as you can see inside uh, the guitar where everything the uh, bridge will sit right in this area so this uh, contraption will be just outside of the edges of the bridge and then I'm going to use this block spacer in here like so and I've made the marks now what we want to do is we want to make sure that we are able to weight this up when we're done so we'll want this part of the guitar sitting uh, and kind of dangling while this part right here has a bag uh, bean bag underneath it. So we're going to want to get things in here. We're not going to worry so much about 
these end pins, uh, the most important thing that we can do first is get everything lined up and glued into place. Once that's done, then we'll worry about putting the end pins in. Now, we've, while we've got the hide glue out, we're gonna do a couple other things. Wherever you see screws coming through uh, up here and over here where the uh, pit guard, which is a license plate are, we're going to pin in little blocks there and drill those out while we're in here. But starting off, we're gonna put a little bit of moisture where this structure is going to go and we're going to make sure that this starts to soak in a little bit. We're just using warm water out of the hide glue heater like so. And that way everything will want to soak in. This dry wood would kind of reject the hide glue. Then we're going to come in and you can see that this hide glue, of course we've got um, paper toweling and water, but this stuff is flowing really well. We're just gonna come in on those lines a little bit like so. Come up here on the top sides like so. We've also got our Botox injection needle, so once everything gets in here and while we're waiting for this we can go along to all the curfing and everything where everything something might be loose these tone bars wherever and put on a nice little layer of hide glue and tighten up everything while you got the back on you really want to do that um, hot hide glue is going to give you a little bit of work time certainly better than something like CA glue or something like that. So we're going to tack this, let this tack up a little bit while I'm showing you here. This is what we would use to come along and fill in spots here and along the sides here. And we're going to do that while we are waiting for the structure to Back up in place. The main thing here is to make sure that everywhere where this needs to be in contact with the bottom is in contact again it doesn't matter if these pins are loose or whatever and we've got our spacer in here we want to remember that we don't want the glue to put our spacer to be a permanent part of the solution so once everything is in order we'll pop that out now i'm going to go along once i know everything is lined up good like so, I can see the lines. And we're going to come along with some more hide glue. So that's about enough of you watching that, right? And then while things are waiting to dry, we're going to take our syringe here. And we're going to come along these tone bars and put a nice layer of hide glue there just in case something is ever trying to work itself loose. I don't see any gaps, which is good. This tool is very handy. Okay, guys, a couple things I need to catch up with you. We've turned the guitar over. I have put the bridge on so I can kind of look at the strings and you can tell 
that this is going to go up and down here. Again, we're going to stabilize the back by flipping it over and putting a brace in and doing some um, work back there. But a couple of things I want to show you. First off, there's a couple of these screws here that are going through the body of the guitar. I'm going to put something on the back. It's very windy out, by the way. That's what's going on with the noise in the background. But I'm going to glue a couple little pieces of wood in correspondence where these go. So they have some backing here and there's one here. So we're going to loosen those up here. Now, when I am flexing the guitar, I have taken a palette knife heated up not this one but it kind of gives you the idea and heated this up and got the fingerboard cut loose from where it's glued to the top of the guitar and made a wedge and that mark right there goes in up to here like so so we're going to cut that off ultimately when we get everything in place but it's the width that i need and it also lines up with the string action where I want it. So that's temporarily going to help me out there. And finally, believe it or not, I am going to put a bolt through the neck. We're going to drill a hole up higher in the heel. If you drill it low, you're going to, you're going to chip out the bottom where everything comes together in the dovetail. But we are going to use a stainless steel bolt and a T-knot that threads into this and it will go into the guitar like this. So we're going to stabilize the neck. I'm going to do all that and show it to you when I'm done. But the main thing here is I have this string and this string about up to tension and I can see my action is where it needs to be. Okay guys, let me kind of show you the trick to putting a bolt through a neck. Now, anybody that is <laughs> saying, oh, why would you do that? Well, they've never had a neck break loose when your guitar came home from the shop or hanging on the wall of a guitar shop. So, yeah, we're not working on a Gibson here. Anyway, so here's the moral of the story. You need to drill a pilot hole with a long bit that goes all the way through. That's the first thing you want to do. Then you want to remember that you're going to need a shoulder for this to sit on. So the hole for the shoulder right here, you can see there's a bigger hole there and then a smaller one inside. That shoulder is drilled with a Forstner bit like this. Okay. Now, these Forstner bits have a nub on them, so the pilot hole that you drilled with the long bit fits that. You don't want to drill the big hole going through first. Then on the back side, where the T-nut goes, you see that? The T-nut needs to be recessed down into there, like so. You see that? Of course, it's turned around. There we go. But once that's in there, then there needs to be a little bit bigger hole drilled for this part of the T-nut to go inside there. And then finally, when that's all done, you finally drill the hole that's big enough for the bolt to go through. So this here now will go through here. And it's tight enough where I will screw it in. Let's see if I can do that live on camera. There we go. You'll watch it come through, hopefully. You see that? It's coming through here. I'm going to back it out now that I, now that I know it goes straight through and I will put on my T-knot and run it in through there. And then it's got a couple of holes that I'll put a couple of your favorite and mine shake flick teal screws in and everything will hold together. This does not hold the neck on. It doesn't set the neck angle. It just keeps it solid once it's there. Okay, now remember this screw right here 
is sticking through the body as well as this one. So we're loosening those up so we can put those little pieces of backing wood on the underside. Let's turn this over now. Okay guys, I want to show you something here. There are a couple of cleats that were put in, one here and a one here. They were actually um, done pretty good by somebody who got here before me. Remember this guitar is from 1950 so it started to show wear and tear a long time ago. Now I can heat up granny's iron or I can take my little pallet knife and the good old trusty crack torch. Did I just say that? Yeah. Well, let me tell you this. Grandma doesn't like candles with them. I guarantee you that. So we just heat that up a little bit and we're going to pop that cleat off of there. Oh, look at that. See how that worked? Yeah, nice and warm. And we're going to get that. Oh, that one come off nice. It left a little bit of itself there. Good. But you know that we have used Chick Flick Teal muslin and hide glue in the past. So I'm going to cut a piece that addresses that crack and another little one here. And then on the back of the guitar, we've got a big crack that we pump some glue into when we put this, when we were working on this the first time. I'm going to go ahead and pop those cleats off right there. And we are going to put some chick flick teal muslin and also while we're in here there used to be a brace right here you can see it and it's missing which favored this to split this way and we'll put another one here another one here but we do not want to cover up the factory mark that says f 50 and we also want to watch out for the model number here number here which ends in 700 all right we've got that cut and i'm going to put a little bit of moisture on here we've got the hide glue heater going on back here and we want to let that soak in you can see that crack these have all been fixed in the past and they're sealed up but while we're in here now i've cut this to here and i will cut the rest of it once it settles in the hide glue is nice and warm so it's going to flow really well and we're going to let it tack up on the downside of the fabric we're going to come up to the f hole up there because that's where the crack starts and we will just do this and our friend the love pencil is always good this right here leveling all this out looks like we might need a tad bit more right in here this muslin is weaved both ways so it'll work pretty good at stopping everything from splitting okay there we go. Don't be shy. Yeah, the acoustic properties of this went out the window probably by Easter after the Christmas it was bought. So it's got a pick up on it. There we go. All right. Okay, this one here is pretty small, so we'll get it to the edge where it's starting to crack. And push that down for a minute and then top coat it from this way. And that will take care of the top, except for these little pieces of wood that we're going to put one there and one right there okay so while we are in here and while we have our hide glue heated up and flowing real good we're just going to go along the curving and everywhere with our brush here like so top and bottom 
and make sure that nothing is loose. Again, this has been at this for 70 some years. And so we want to make sure that while we have the opportunity to be in here, we can tighten up everything that might need a little touch up. A little grandpa surgery, right? So this thing was had been in somebody's hands for 10 years before I was born. So we're gonna go along the we already did this with the with the glue syringe, but it's not gonna hurt anything to get a little bit more here. Again, if you think the acoustic properties of this guitar are gonna be affected, well that kind of went out the window when they pressed the top in the factory instead of carving it. So there we go. I don't want to mess up this fine electronics job. Let me know if I just messed that up because you got a better angle than I do. If I did, make a comment below and then I'll delete it. The last thing we want to do here is go around this edge now. Oh, I remember I had to put a piece of kerfing in here. That's why there's Chick Flick Teal on that. What do you know how soon I must have forgot? My, that upside down top of the guitar makes for a really good cradle. And we're going to do a little bit of work right here. And we're going to leave that cleat there. But it's time to hide glue in. these pieces here. This will stop everything from trying to split in the future. We'll just pull that back like so. My a nice sloppy. You don't have to answer. It's okay. Okay, there we go. And we'll come up to right there. My old world craftsmanship right here, huh, peeps? Okay, now for something completely unorthodox. What brings charm on the farm? <laughs> yeah, that's right, the farmer's wife. I don't know what that means. Anyway, we'll just flip that around so you can see it down through the F hole. But I am sinking this piece of yardstick down into the tail and head block up here so when I get everything put back together and winched the right way with that uh, wedge up on top and the body belt uh, bent back against itself to glue everything on I am just taking a chisel and taking this down carefully because I still have glue drying everywhere down to the thickness of that yardstick or half of a yardstick and it will sit down in here flush like so so I can glue everything back on Shh, don't tell anybody yeah I know you're not supposed to do that you sit in that chair okay let's catch up you see that this yardstick has been cut down to a little less than 36 inches. There are some pilot holes drilled into it and there is a countersink used on both ends. We took a chisel and cut these pockets in the tail block and the head block that will fit the ruler. Now, you can see that there's a gap here or if I move it, there's a gap back here. So, here's the deal. When I flex the body up to where the strings need to be on the other side because I already have a bridge in it, when I pull this up, when both of those are tight, the body is where it needs to be. I will high glue this in 
and screw the screws in using these and you have to remember that if this is not countersunk these will stick up and impede the back of the guitar being glued on once that is done then I can go along with a little belt sander and get the, this all smooth now we know that if the back of the guitar fit before and we wedge it up this way something is going to be sticking out somewhere and I'd rather have that be at the back than in the front big thing here is we need to get this all cleaned down make sure the ruler or piece of yardstick is not sticking up and if you look through the F hole you're going to see something about the farmer's wife anyway life just works out as it does moving right along Okay, let's take a look at what we've got here now. I've kept these clamps on while the hide glue set up on these two pockets, so it's bowed down a little bit. And now as I release these, I can watch the bow come back up. I'm gonna keep those big clamps handy because I'm gonna need, now that popped right into place, nothing cracked here. We wanna pay close attention to this area here and this area here just in case something gives loose but as we turn this over we're going to be able to see that the string action there is pretty good and remember I've got a full untouched bridge that has not been sanded down the string tension is pretty good it's not quite up to pitch but I can actually raise this up a little bit now to get this thing to fret right these are all sloppy but these two end ones now now as I tighten those up again we're going to look here and that action's not that bad if I need to take something down it's right here all right it is time to put the back on we have sanded down the mating surfaces meaning this part and this part here so everything will match up so there's not a bunch of lumps and all that but as you will see this body did not like being twisted and torqued around so if I glue this up at the top here and line this up you'll see that there's edges and parts sticking out and in fact on the back there is about that much sticking out and again that comes from flexing so when we glue this on the main thing is to line this part up and we're going to glue this on to about here and use side clamps and clamps all over here to get this lined up and then when that starts to set we'll go around to the rest of the body and get all the clamps on yes we are going to have to take some of the body the back of the body off at the end of the day but that's all right yes this is hide glue of course it's hide glue oh look it's steaming i like steaming because steaming will make it fine right and we're gonna go right to the middle of this they call this the top bow 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 yippee oh yippee a yippee bow 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 okay there we go We try to put this all together at once it's going to fight back if there's anything i want right it's in this area here yeah those screws are embedded in glue for the next 
75 years or so. And then we're going to do the same thing here. Come around to the edge a little bit. I can see where the where the head block is there. There we go. We're going to have a wet rag or two here to make sure everything is okay. Let that tack for just a minute. All right, the, we have everything clamped down here and the edges and everything line up. Now there's a little bit back here that's going to need to be pushed that way. And you can see this part is sticking out right here. But for the most part, this is coming together pretty good. If you've got a guitar that has no finish and has been drying out for years and you're doing this or you, you take a project apart and then forget to put it back together for a little bit, it's going to be harder for you to get everything to line up because things want to be left of their own they're going to shape the way they want to if you've got braces inside of here that are busted up and detached it only gets worse so we'll give this a few hours then we'll use our big clamps back here and let everything set up overnight all right guys it's a couple hours later and you will remember that we applied glue down midway through the waist of this guitar and now we're going to take a wedge shape and we're going to pull off this cross brace here or this clamp that's keeping everything lined up crossways we've still got our high glue heated up and we're going to pull this up just a little bit and come around and get to the point where our glue needs to go in and we have a glue syringe as well as a brush to put everything together so we can just go in here and inject glue in like so to where everything stops and then we'll just slide this down can you see what i'm doing here let's spin this just a little bit if we can mm -hmm. like so without knocking everything over and we just come in here like so now you don't want to forget that the tail block is back here you want to get all kinds of glue on there but We've got a lot of slop out going on here as we went along, but there we go. Time to clamp. Okay, guys, believe this or not, but there are 26 clamps on this body right now, excluding the long clamps that are bringing everything into the sides. That makes 30 clamps. The weight of those clamps... If this guitar had to suspend it by itself, would crater the guitar. But that's how unruly this body is. So, I've got a heater going on. We're going to leave this alone overnight. And I will see you to Mala. Oh. The 1950 Silvertone Junk Pile. It lives, it breathes again. A two time loser is back. It's joined us in life again, and it is out of the OR. It's got a couple little issues, like about that much of the body sticking out, because that's how much the body needed to be flexed from here to here to get the string action where it needed to be. I got a couple more little things to do with this, but guys, moral story. If you have 
I got an idea. If you have fragile instruments and you are going to put them in the shop and have people play them unattended, you can expect this to happen. And so, I'm gonna throw this in the playlist. Um, get up there, hover your mouse up there. And um, it was the first reincarnation and now this one and um, hopefully we won't see this one again anytime soon got a little bit of work to do here and there and adjust the bridge and but I've got plenty of room to do that now so hey remember give me a like subscribe if you tend to lean that way in life and always remember glasses don't make you smarter I'm a perfect example of that, but always remember, if you tell someone about me and they watch me, you won't have to. I got some other projects to get to in the future, far less impressive than this one. See you then.